but now that's not happening. So I was going to talk about. You hit us with the, your weirdest science Fun fiction. I, I can't segue myself. Um, okay, fine, Declan. What is your weirdest science fiction film? <laughs> Flawless, <laughs> absolute, <laughs> just, yeah, just, just fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> now. <laughs> Okay, so it's the latest episode of Arcadio, and at this stage we've all been to see uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. And some of us twice. Some of us twice, because um, they have lots of money and they can afford to go to the cinema twice. And they're also I'm massive dorks. And they're also massive dorks. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so... <laughs> okay, so no, that's not who's continue. the dork. Um... <laughs> We decided to dedicate this podcast to uh, Guardians of the Galaxy and all things that are weird science fiction. Um, now, for a spoiler-free review, you can read Anto's, uh, which is on the website. This is going to contain spoilers. We're going to be talking about the guts of the movie. Um, we're going so to complain about it a little bit. We are going to complain about it a little bit. Uh, it's some of us a little bit more than others. Um, Socks not going to complain about it at all because he's a dork. I wasn't uh, going to say anything there. I was there just we go. See, see how it went. <laughs> he's already complaining. <laughs> yeah. Oh God, he started already. Guys. Oh, is... <laughs> we um. So we do, so spoilers. Just be aware they're they're going to be the whole way, and it's going to creep in at the start. And we're going to say if there's going to be no spoilers at the start. But there's going to be spoilers everywhere. So if you haven't seen it and you don't want anything ruined, don't listen to this. Um, go see it first, then listen. Yes, and then yeah, that's a good way because I would just say. Don't come back. Yeah. But and yeah, then, that, then that's, a good, that's a better idea. Comment at us and let us know what you thought of the film. Yeah. Think of this as downloadable content for the film. Exactly. The film was nice. This Unofficial. Kind of it. Un- unlicensed. Oh, yeah. In any way endorsed. If Marvel Official would like content. to get contact with us and pay us to do uh, commentaries for their films, I mean, we're open. Just saying. Just saying. Not though, because he's a bit of a dork. No. Uh, I'm the I'm... only one here that hasn't said anything mean about it yet. Marvel would love to have me on team. <laughs> Nah. Somebody else is giving out. And nah. I've seen it twice. So, let's, <laughs> before, before we ruin the film for everyone and we make Sock cry, um, weirdest science fiction, fiction film you've seen outside of Guardians of the Galaxy? Because it's pretty weird. It is a strange film. And nobody... It right. is not. I what? have seen... All right. My weirdest... Uh, we actually discussed before this fucking thing that I was going to lead in with, uh, let's talk about our weirdest science fiction films and someone was going to just play in with a bit of a segue, but now that's not happening, so I was going to talk about it. You hit us with your weirdest science fiction film. I I can't segue myself. Um, Okay, fine. Declan, what is your weirdest science fiction film? Flawless. Absolute. Just just fuck off. (laughs) (laughs) Now, with the flashcards I've pre-prepared for this... um, (laughs) That we can't see. Yeah, shut up. <laughs> um, oh no, I can understand that. My first Star Podcadio thing, I brought a script and I was ridiculed, so yeah. I had a script and I have a script for this one. I have a um the bones of a script. That's what I always have. Because I don't I don't I don't I feel like scripting these things is a really bad idea. I wrote down like the information I wanted to have and then was just ridiculed for it and I was like, well, fine. Yeah, because you're a dork. <laughs> uh, I studied and everything. I got facts and quotes and <laughs> You're not helping yourself here. <laughs> I thought it was like a real, you know, a discussion, like a Skype conference conference. Does, like, does, no, does no. Anybody it else is, see, kind see of. Sock with like a pen and paper and these really thick, nerdy glasses. <laughs> uh, um, right, so weird science fiction film I've seen. I don't know if people are going to agree with this or not, but I'm going to put Starship Troopers up there. It is, um, a, it is a weird yeah. film, to be sure. Purely because you've got Neil Patrick Harris... Uh, telepathically manipulating a ferret. <laughs> uh, I mean, well, when you put it like that. Um, now, you know, it's a science fiction movie. Science fiction is going to be out there. But even for sci-fi, this is really out there. There's a race of bugs that are throwing meteorites at Earth. Um, the bugs are mostly mindless as well. Yeah, except for the disgusting, for the hideous ones. One. Yeah. Um, the one that's practically like a straw. What kind of freaking straws do you use? 
You mean a smoke? No, you know the the main book with the the straw that's like pretty much. Yeah, the one that sucks the living brains out of Rob Lowe. Um, yeah. Oh, 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 spoilers. spoilers! He always gets a lot. Spoilers, spoilers! And fairness, how long? That movie's like film? fifty years old. It's not a spoiler. <laughs> <laughs> um. Oh, now, anyway. <laughs> Good. I'm actually going to put the clip up and get sued for it. Um, <laughs> no, the. I'm not saying it's a bad movie. I just. Like, I remember watching it going, this is really good. Um, but at the same time, kind of going, eh, there, there's like a million things all crammed into. One of um, the weirdest things, actually, that, about the film is, um, and I always notice this, is that they shower together, men and women do. And there's a brilliant disgusting. scene where they have um, exposition. No, it's just not something you ever see. And uh, there's a there's brief of exposition where they're asking each other why they go to the army. And one of them says it's because she wants to have a baby. And I'm pretty sure that is like one of the few sci-fi films that contains the line, why did you join the army? Because I want to have a baby. Yeah, I remember her. Um, and I was going to say that. But, you know, thanks for getting there first. And, uh... It began as a segue and then he just kept going. <laughs> <laughs> he hasn't really mastered the was it, was it, was it, was it Was it a segue enough for you, Declan? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it just, if, if you could pull it back a little bit. And those segues, you've really got a battle for them before he just finishes the whole thing for you. <laughs> Um, but I think, yeah, so Neil Patrick Harris telepathically manipulating a ferry and Denise, is it Denise Van Outen? Have I got that right? Is that who it was? Denise Richardson. Yeah. Denise yeah. Richardson. Yeah. Why she did I, who, who the hell is Denise Van Outen then? Um, who is Denise She's like Outen? that blonde dancer musical person. That's the oh, one. she is, yeah. <laughs> well, that, those are two very different people. I love that um, scene with Denise Richardson where like, uh, she uh, she like she blows up a ship and then they go oh we have a great crew and this is her, her smiling being like I I did that and now I'm getting yeah. that worse. <laughs> um, yeah no it's like the, the movie the movie was kind of generally all over the place. Um, good but all over the place. Yeah. I remember I seeing think... um, sorry, oh. me actually. I was going to oh, say sorry, the oh. weirdest that I can remember anyway. Battlestar Galactica, maybe the older one that came out like when I was a kid. So I had no idea what Battlestar Galactica was. It was like, oh, sci-fi movie, this should be good. I had no idea what was going on for half of it. <laughs> Did you watch the TV show at all? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you watch the movie? <laughs> was... Me and Andy had arranged to go to the cinema. We didn't check what was on. Our parents oh, dropped us off Andy. and then that was that. We're just like, oh, that's on. Okay. Dude, what's going on? I don't know. Secretly, Andy knew the whole plot. No, neither of us knew what was going on. <laughs> it was like... That's one of the weird little... Just... I have no idea to this day what we were watching. It was one of those little arranged sure hangout it. dates. Film. I think it was a re-release of the pilot. Was it? I think it might have been. Because I don't remember there being a Battle of Galactica film. But I do remember the pilot got re-released into the cinema years ago. Maybe it was. A re-edited version of it. But I could be wrong on that. But I think that's what it was. But either way, yeah. Without the TV show, without any kind of... You know. That was terrible anyway, whatever it was. I remember this one guy had dreads and he was like eating rats or something. And we were just like, Dude, what's going on in this? I'm assuming this was in the movie and not the just outside the cinema. No, the Lizzie Valley was a harsh place back in the day. Star Century. Is Arnie and Sylvester Stallone are having a rat burger from the dead? No, it, it's, yeah, it sounded like a scene from Blade Runner for a second. It was just like there's a man with dreads. <laughs> there as well in weird sci-fi, but... No, it's not. It's not weird at all. It's awesome. What, Blade Runner? Blade Runner. It's amazing oh. film. I will admit, I only saw it like two years ago for the first time. It's a stunning film. I like that was one of the films when I was a kid. My older brother showed it to me, and just it just it blew me away because it's like. As a film, it's just so, like, the world it creates is so vivid-like, and the narrative is just so incredible. Um, they are remaking it, aren't they? I'm not sure. I think it might be in production limbo, which I'm very happy about, because that is not yeah, a film no. that needs any kind of update, remake, reboot, whatever way you want to put on it. It doesn't need it. Just re-release the, the same about. I kind of feel the same about Blade, the original trilogy with Wesley Snipes. It's like, it's like, oh, we need to make a new Blade. No, we don't. Those ones are fine. No, the second one's awful. The second third one, no. The third one gets the most crap of everything, but, like, you've got Blade. It's because the third one is one gigantic fight scene. There's, no, there's not even an attempt at a story. 
Wait, what's the what's the story with the second one? Second one is the second uh, one. The more advanced vampires. Yeah, he joins oh, the sorry. pack and they go hunting in the sewers. The third one is the one where Blade teaches Dracula how to say motherfucker. Yeah. Oh, see, yeah, that's the thing. I always get confused because the third one had Ryan Reynolds in it, didn't it? Yeah. Yeah, Yeah. see, that's why I get confused. And um, what's your one name? Fucking your one from Seventh Heaven. Jessica Biel? Oh, yeah. Do not encourage that name around these parts. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't going to mention it earlier. But... Yeah. Um, she might creep out of the corner. No, she Naomi can't. usually brings her, so... Yeah. <laughs> They're actually not talking right now. No. Hello, uh, Ox. They fell out over a boy, didn't they? That's what. Yeah, Ryan. Um. The. Uh, that's 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 where they are right now. Actually, they're fighting. Literally fighting to death over him. Um. Trace. Oh. Yep. Weirdest film. Starship Troopers two. Two. The sequel or. Bring me back. Hmm. The sequel. Yeah, there was a sequel, and I think there's like a three one. A third there is. One, I have the trilogy there is, yeah. on my shelf. Don't ask me why there's a trilogy. I mean, yeah, like. I mean, like, I think they should have just let the, the first one be as weird. Uh, lads, they made a cartoon series. They did. Uh, that cartoon series was deadly, though. I only remember, uh, only remember ever watching one episode of it, and kind of going, "This is awfully like Starship Troopers, the movie." Yeah. Um, and then to find out, to my horror afterwards, that they made a cartoon out of it. Yeah. Uh, there, there, there's remember? a great episode where uh, one of the soldiers gets stuck in space and the oh, movie wow. is like them trying to find him and him just floating around space <laughs> and it's one of those things where even as a kid I was like you jumps the shark this is too ridiculous of a scenario for someone to get out of like just being left in space just like ah yep yeah. oh what's that 25 minutes into the episode I'm saved Jesus nah, I didn't see that coming yay filler episode <laughs> yeah <laughs> great fun everyone Stop needs a filler episode here and there what were you going to say I was going to say, does anyone remember the old Back to the Future cartoon? That was really... Oh, yeah. No. Yeah, that, that happened. Great. I think it was set after. I vaguely remember it. The children from the third film were in it, and it was like, huh? What's was going on? Uh, was, was it set in the West? It was, too, yeah. I think it was, and then they kind of jumped here and there. Naturally, there was time travel involved, I think. I remember oh. very little about it, but just that it happened. I probably shouldn't ever, have, maybe. Have if we're, if we're t- I remember uh, Christopher Lloyd came back for it, all right. Um, if, if, if we're talking horribly weird sci-fi time travel movies, uh, Bill and Ted. Oh, yeah. Uh, just just going to throw that out there. I'd be waiting for the TV show. The cartoon? No, the TV show. The, I did not know there was a TV show. Yeah, it and Ferris Bueller both got TV show spinoffs. What? Uh, they never made it over here. Like they never made it over here. I'm guessing they probably didn't do who didn't do too well in the states to begin with. What was uh, the premise of the Ferris Bueller one? Does he get like a week off and then just? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, it's essentially like it's it's essentially him just like hopping off school like 24 days straight. Like Jesus Christ! Wants, like at some point he has to get in trouble for some of this stuff. Like yeah, someone's gonna like, cop on. And is Matthew Broderick still playing him? No. Neither, ah. neither, neither are the other two playing Bill and Ted either. Like, for Bill, for Bill and Ted, the actors look more like the original Bill and Ted than the actor they got for uh, First Peter. And it was actually Jennifer Aniston's first um, TV gig was First Peter's sister in First Peter's oh. Day Off the TV show. On the subject of replacement actors and stuff, does anyone remember the awkward Home Alone Tree movie? It didn't have that kid, <laughs> had that new weird looking kid. I've I've never watched it, nor will I ever plan to. Yeah. I actually remember watching it. Uh, the older sister in that. Now, she's only in it for about four minutes. Scarlett Johansson. <laughs> wow. There it also goes back to Scarlett Johansson for you, doesn't it? Taking you just segue to a whole new level. <laughs> straight back just to be able to be like, Scarlett Johansson, lads. Just saying. Scarlett she's Johansson. in it. <laughs> hey, um, Therese, you were going to say something? No, just going back to the Ferris Bueller TV show, it probably feeds into the weird theory about like Ferris Bueller not existing at all anyway. Um, have you heard that theory? No. Yeah, that it's all Cameron's imagination. Yeah, he just ima- he like he develops kind of like Fight Club. Yeah. Mm. Oh, spoilers Except, for anyone you know, who's seen Fight Club. <laughs> who hasn't seen Fight Club? Oh, for the love of God! <laughs> <laughs> Turns out. Do you know what? You know what? The fucking Titanic sinks at the end. Of the <laughs> whoa, 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 well. whoa! Hold on. Yoda Hold dies on. at the end, lads. Yoda <laughs> dies at the end. Of Titanic. <laughs> <laughs> Down with the ship, I will go. <laughs> um, oh, actually, hold, all right, if we're talking about weird sci-fi, we have to talk about Terry Gilliam for a second. Because uh, has anyone here seen Terry Gilliam's films? 
name a movie? Uh, Brazil, yeah. Twelve Monkeys. Uh, Twelve Monkeys. I remember that thing on. My parents got it. They they back in the day when you were still renting a VHS. Yeah. Um, and sitting there, we were all kind of going, "Why is this movie called Twelve Monkeys? Where are the monkeys?" <laughs> <laughs> And not being very impressed with it. Bruce Willis is in that, isn't he? Indeed. Um, those, uh, Brazil in particular is one of Brazil might was a contestant candidate for my favorite film of all time. It's just incredible. But uh, like Brazil is one of those films, right? I'm not going to tell you anything about what happens in it. Just Robert De Niro plays a superhero plumber in it. Oh, amazing. Robert De Niro plays a superhero plumber in it. In a movie called Brazil. He does indeed. Okay. It's right just hand. like, I remember watching it, just my brother was like, watch it, just trust me, watch it. I remember watching it being like, this is incredible. Like, because Terry Gilliam, he made um, he made the final final part of his dystopian trilogy. It started with Brazil, then 10 years later he made 12 Monkeys, and then almost 10 years later he released Zero Theorem. And uh, the three of them make up this kind of dystopic trilogy where it's basically like, um, kind of, three different ways of kind of approaching the theme of dystopia and they kind of the themes kind of loosely fit into each other like they're different films but they all kind of when you watch them as three they kind of have this kind of ebb and flow to them like and um, as weird and wacky filmmakers tend to do and uh like even with zero theorem he made everything with practical effects and with zero theorem like everything is totally practical on it there's very little cgi there's as minimum as he could get away with and uh it's one of the few films that were uh, was has been released that actually like you could walk around the set and stuff. And when you watch films like Brazil and 12 Monkeys now, like there's an agelessness to them. You're kind of watching me like it's weird and wacky, but it has an element of plausibility to it just because everything has been made in the film. Like you're watching it being like, this is how it would actually be. Whereas if you're watching it with CGI, you know, you're kind of sitting there being like, well, it looks fake. So therefore it is fake. And yeah, there's my... There's my two cents on weird sci-fi. I'm not, I'm not going to be rude there, but did anybody else just flick over to like an internet tab for like two seconds <laughs> while Andrew had his rant? <laughs> Hopefully not the listeners. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I was like, I actually forgot I was on a podcast for a second. <laughs> well, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. fine. That's fine. I'm going to write like a, a 2,000 word essay for the arcade and everyone's going to read it. They're going to be on like, oh. <laughs> Wow, Declan, have you read this? And you'd be like, oh, sorry, browse some other tab. <laughs> <laughs> Declan, we'll edit that article and down from the forwards. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be basically me trying to find the 12 monkeys in 12 monkeys. <laughs> um, <laughs> there isn't even one monkey in there. <laughs> then what's the bloody point? <laughs> um, Remember we said we'd keep it under the half hour mark. Okay, yeah, let's move on <laughs> to um, what we're actually here to talk about. That's Guardians of the Galaxy. So before we start bashing it, um, hey, and spoiling know. it. Um, and Doc, Doc and Sock. God damn you, Back to Future. <laughs> um, damn um, you all. We need to go back, Bertie. <laughs> uh, right. Favorite thing about Guardians of the Galaxy? Ooh. The locations. Okay. I, by the way, I'd like to point out you can't say what the other person said. But yeah, those, those um, set pieces, like when they're flying into the colony in nowhere and the other planets that they visit, just breathtaking. Like, just oh, it was amazing. They literally took nowhere off the comic book pages and dropped it in the film. That's the thing, and there's no detail spared in kind of like, you know, even even I was... seeing the locations for a minute. Like, there's no detail spared in the, like how. No, deep it's all it there. Like even at the, even in the opening scene when like Star Lord lands down and he's walking through the, I can't even remember the name of the place he was in, but uh, you know, like or... and he's walking through the lo- the landscape and he's walking through the old building and stuff like when you're watching it you're kind of you want the camera to stay there longer because you as he flies away and you can see the planets and stuff like that and the sun and stuff it was like oh my god that looks a very expensive Every, shot everywhere felt it was there for seconds hmm? the thing i think i liked about it most is just that it opened the door to marvel's cosmic universe like it set up so much stuff ronan the accuser we had the kree empire we had xandar the nova corpse I yeah. think the Watchers were thrown in there for a little bit. And I only even... found it after the fact that Yondu is as important a character to the Guardians as he is. I oh, find yeah. it really cool that they gave him a pivotal And they did him part. rather well, but at the same time did him really differently. Like, he still had his little whistling mm-hmm. arrows and all that, but he was played by uh, man Michael Rooker, so he was a bastard. <laughs> he was he a was bit a of a nice bastard. bastard. Um, he was a bit. Look, I'm going to be... Okay. 
I mean, when, when the film opened, it opened on th- last Thursday, didn't it? Yeah, I see yeah. opening day, so yeah, Thursday. Dork. For the record, that just that that. That just makes Anto a dork, if anybody is listening. It's one on now. <laughs> it's me and Anto tied for dork. Yeah. Oh, sock. No, 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 sweetheart. No, no, no. <laughs> hey, I'm cool. <laughs> you just Facebooked a message. You just Facebooked <clears throat> a message. Um, uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so private. Everybody, um, I remember on Thursday evening after everybody had seen it, it was like, uh, I am Groot. Everyone was like, I am Groot. And I was like, that's yeah. going to be killed. Just to say, it, if you're listening to this, please don't like kill that. Use that sparingly in conversation, please. Let's... I actually put that up as the motivational quote of the day on the notice board and work. Oh, Jesus. It's just, Good it's going to, like, like a month from now, I'm just going to be sick of hearing it. And damn it, I blame you, Saga. Blame me for. There's going to be also, like, every t shirt website is oh, yeah. it's going to have some sort of going, variation like, of it. It's going to be like every second week now, it's going to be like. I am Groot T-shirt. Here's a variation of the I am Groot T-shirt. Yeah, it'll be oh, we're reprinting the I am Groot T-shirt. Um, so my favorite thing is going to be Rocket Raccoon. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Um, and not for, not for the the normal reasons. Uh, I mean, obviously Bradley Cooper, fantastic job. Uh, the animation, the character, really, really interesting. My reason I like Rocket Raccoon, and she's not here, so she can't really defend herself. Um. <laughs> Naomi kind of has a crush on Rocket Raccoon. That's, um, that's great. Um, remind me to wash my with hands every time I come in physical contact with that girl from now on. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, so if I, yeah, I, poor Ryan is probably like trying to wash the raccoon paint off. Um, <laughs> raccoon paint. They can't afford fur. Um, Trey's favorite. Um, the music. Oh, yeah. yeah, it was good. Killer soundtrack. Yeah. There's yeah. no denying it. Who did... I'm going to look it up who did the score for it. Um, I found the score actually really cool. It was a little like the Avengers score, but a lot more rougher and just kind of generally ballsier. It was. It had, like... Uh, that's the thing. What I, like, the score didn't feel like a superhero movie score, which I really liked about it. It didn't feel like this typical, like, momentous thing. It kind of went yeah, along with... I the think it was used very sparingly. You know? Um, it kind of it went got, with Star Lord's awesome mix. Yeah, like that's the thing. It kind of it, it got a bit momentous towards the end because you know they win yeah, and stuff. Good. And um, but uh, who did music? Tyler Bates did the music. And uh, well, actually, talking about um, well, yeah, he did like Three Hundred, Watchmen, Circle Punch, um, Slither. He's done a lot. Super as well. He's worked with Guns. Worked with James Gunn in a few pictures. Um, but uh, actually, yeah, just talking about a. Uh, Rocket Raccoon. Um, I love the fact that the two A-list celebrities that are in the film's cast uh, were relegated yeah. to the animated characters. I don't know you say it was Vin Diesel's best role. They didn't have to look at him <laughs> once. I, I, I would like to point this out. Uh, I don't think Bradley Cooper is A-list. Bradley Cooper is definitely A-list. What are you on about? He was in Why A-team. Be, what? And he was in Silver Lines. Oh, wow. <laughs> he was in the, A-list is like generally for reserved for people who are good. Um, oh. Have you seen Silver Lines movies. Playbook? Yeah, um, putting Vin Diesel up there. So, have you have you seen The Hangover? He's an A minus. Have you but, seen Thirty Seconds to Launch? Yeah, okay, no, I, I I have seen The Hangover. I haven't seen Thirty Seconds to Launch, and nor do I want to. But well, there you go. <laughs> but the thing is, though, is that being an A lister has nothing to do with their quality so much as how much money they make and how much they can draw with their name on a film. Him and Jennifer Lawrence go headlines, several lines playbook, and it made a lot of money. Yeah, but. Jennifer Lawrence is in it. Jennifer Lawrence, who was a co-star. Oh. Um, <laughs> sorry, yeah, Declan. Uh, A-listers, right? Uh, A-listers don't make... Oh, he's getting, he's getting angry. He's getting, he's, he's A- A-listers angry. don't make 200 million in the box office per film, which is what Bradley Cooper has done. <laughs> Vin Diesel do. is not an A-lister. Can we just get that across? He is. I did Fast and the Furious 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Yeah, this... which are films that make a lot of money. Yeah, like, you wouldn't hasn't... say the acting was good. You don't go to that. Oh, man, yeah, but I'm, I'm, I'm not character. grading their okay, acting. Okay, right. I'm, gra- I'm not grading their acting. I'm saying they're A-list for celebrity events. Like, oh, okay, okay. Yeah, Oscar. If like, like, if you look at something oh, I like, I agree. Oscars, he's a big name. Like, I, I yeah, that's, I get that's who what I'm saying. I'm not saying they're A. Jesus, no. 
Bradley Cooper is all right. I was like, well, like, if we're putting Vin Diesel up there, then we can't hold well, Bradley not, Cooper yeah, no, the same. I, Vin Diesel is driving the car to the venue for the actors. Like, he's... no, I, I didn't mean that. I meant <laughs> Jesus. I, I just meant in terms of like films they've been in and like generally too what fast, they're known too for. Furious. Um, <laughs> Great name. Oh, well, first, Vin Diesel was in the first two Riddick movies. He so was. Yeah. Those are, those are everyone got a bit questioning about what they're doing with Riddick. Yeah. Well, I blame Katie Sackhoff for that. Yeah. Uh, I blame the fact that they waited too long with you. <laughs> so, right. We've all talked about best. Uh, worst. Oof. That's hard. Because I'm, to- I'm actually kind of torn. Personally, between... as I, I pointed out before the, work, before the podcast, I just to state... When I did my review, and I point, I explained this to everyone before the podcast started, but just to explain, I gave my review a perfect score, and I stand by that. But if I had gone into a little bit of spoiler, I would have deducted a point because Nebula and Gamora have a big, like, one of the focal points of the film is their fight, and they have very, very little dialogue between each other. And I felt that for that fight to be really, to have really meant something to us as an audience, more dialogue would have been necessary. Just... Even a simple few lines when they met up on um, Lauren and Dekuza's ship, just to say, like, just to explain where the, where the two of them st- stood to each other would have been enough to kind of really care about the fight. But I, what, I, what I was watching the fight, it was a kick-ass fight, but I didn't care that much about the outcome because I didn't feel that their relationship had been fleshed out enough on screen, if you get me. Yeah, I disagree with that. You disagree with it? I do. I kind of do. Like, I don't think the point was to kind of elaborate on Gamora and... And Nebula's fight at all. There wasn't the point of the film, so why elaboration? Like, but it was make... a pivotal fight. Like they fought twice during the film, and it's they, right? When it was pivotal the... for their storyline, not for the storyline of how the Guardians got together. Yeah, but the film stops being. Yeah, but, but like, the thing is, you have to care about why she's fighting with them, and okay, part of her wrist... fight is directly against her sister, and. For, and it's like as I say, they fight twice in the film. If they didn't care that much about it, they wouldn't have had it had them fight a second time. Drax doesn't fight Ronan E. Cooser directly a second time because by the time he meets him the second time, it's not about his fight with Ronan E. Cooser. It's about yeah. everyone's fight with Ronan E. Cooser. Um, and with bringing back the single fight between Gamora and Nebula, that's them. As far as that's like narratively, that's them saying you should care about these two having out their, you know. Yeah. Whatever their relationship like. Um, okay, at the risk of that's... earning up more dark points for myself, I will go on to say that I read the tie-in comic before Guardians came out, oh, and I know, I know. But look, I'm here now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, tie-in comic before it came out, written by Dan Ablett and Andy Lanning, like Guardians of the Galaxy heroes. Anyone who read the comic will tell you they are the purple you want making that. But um, the comic dealt with the dynamic between Gamora and nebula so i think for me i had a little more invested in it from that yeah because um pretty much thanos pretty much took them after he destroyed their planets and made them his daughters and just kind of sent them out to do his will yeah. well you're told but, um, tell them like yeah, yeah see whenever they failed they were like they could not die if something terrible happened to them and they were just mangled he'd fix them and fill them with cybernetics and they were good to go again and that's why i think nebula carries across a lot more cybernetics in her because yeah. she's failed a lot more than gamora and for her, her little cybernetic patches and all that, we might think they look cool, but she's they're like scars to her, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Next to Gamora, who's naturally beautiful. So I, she's kind of envious there. So they've got this, I thought, interesting enough sibling rivalry. A lot like Thor and Loki. They're yeah. both competing for favour. Well, see, that's and, the thing. You see, like, when you just meant it. Like, actually, I completely agree with that. If they had been given more dialogue, they could have been a female equivalent to Thor and Loki. Like, yeah, they, I think and, it was intended that way, but again... That's the thing. I ended up on the editing floor and it was just is it. and the thing is as well is that Thanos has that line where or Nebula has that line where they're walking away from Thanos and Thanos doesn't regard her and it kind of fe- it, it just kind of feels like Nebula's story is a bit yeah a bit we together. have not Under- seen the last of Nebula anyway play oh definitely like yeah. I mean see that's the thing like that's the only kind of like I, I do I do like after watching the film like when you see the end obviously because she, she's never seen again after she flies away and it's obviously a thing of like in the next film they're going to deal with her story more pivotally, but it felt for what the story that we're gotten is just kind of like 
you could have given her because yeah, Gamora I... gets plenty of time. Gamora gets loads of time to kind of flesh herself out, and then Nebula is left hanging a bit. You know, she's given moments where you're like, you should care. You know, you're you're, you're given moments to told why to care, but then they're not. They don't back it up then with further kind of like with deeper. Can I emotions. ask a, a kind of a stupid question? Um, <clears throat> Nebula was the blue it, one. It, <laughs> she was played by Karen Gillan, who was from Doctor Who. Uh, shut the fuck up. No, my question is, um, and I expect Sock to be able to answer this because he's a huge dork. Um, um, what we know uh, that Nebula is pissy with Gamora because even though both of them want to see Thanos dead, um, for for drastically different different reasons as well like oh yeah oh is it is, it, is that sorry I, I must have missed that Gamora um, I don't think Gamora, Gamora at any I'm, point I'm, says she wants to kill Thanos I think she just kind of wants to get away from him or she wants to get away with him protect thought, people from him whereas Gamora or sorry Nebula is just like I'm going to kill him yeah so I mean we, we obviously learn why Gamora uh, wants to get away from him and wants to save others from him mm-hmm. did we learn did we learn why did he, I mean he, I'm assuming he did the same thing to Nebula and her again. And her I don't. The film yeah. didn't state it. Like the film, it it, it dances That's around it. Generally, how Thanos acquires any kind of yeah. children like that, he just kind of takes them. Okay. And so uh, then pretty much the same. Why... That she hates him because anytime something goes wrong, she's punished for it, tortured, and then rebuilt mm-hmm. and sent back out again. With like, so why Ro- does like she Ronan? Hate Ronan fails, Gamora. and he isn't punished the way she would have been. Um, like, well, because the conversation is obviously because Ron is like, I failed, and Thanos doesn't hurt him the way Nebula he would have hurt yeah. Nebula. But you have to like, as I say, that's not explicitly said in the film as clearly as it could have been. Um, yeah, you know, I think it's left okay, up to assumption that oh well, if this happened to Gamora, then it probably yes. also so, happened to. So why the animosity between Nebula and Gamora? Because it's they like were a both competitive their, sibling yeah. rivalry. It's they're, okay. they, were, they were both right hand people of Ronan and Nebula, because Nebula doesn't hate Ronan the way Gamora hates Ronan. Um, at least that's the way I read it. Is that Nebula still sees she sees companionship or kind of at least a sibling something to identify with? Yeah, yeah, in Ronan, and the way she sees it is that Gamora leaving because neither of them can give a crap about what anyone thinks about Thanos. Because Gamora wants to protect the world from Thanos, and if Thanos dies in the meantime, then that's fine. She'll live with it. She won't yeah, lose any sleep. I think Nebula kind of sees Ronan as an ally. To it's like, Nebula I don't doesn't... care if I have to help kill a world, but if it'll help exactly, me kill yeah. Dad, perfect. But, um, Nebula, whereas Nebula wants to kill Thanos, she doesn't care about protecting the world from Thanos. She just wants to kill Thanos. She's but happy Nebula... to help end it to get to Thanos. Exactly, and it's like, but when Gamora runs out, she sees. Nebula would see Gamora betraying Ronan as being like, why did you betray him? Because he, because she doesn't view Ronan as being evil. Because don't forget, Ronan also goes against Thanos in the film. Yeah, yeah. Which is a big deal. And uh, oh, that's yeah. the thing, which, which basically, with that, all three of them are going against, are in some way, Ronan's the one who explicitly does it in the film. That like he's the one who explicitly challenges him in the film. Gamora yeah, busts off, but never gets any face time to say, I'm, I'm totally against you. And Nebula, ne- Nebula's wait biding her time until she gets the perfect opportunity to do it. She's not going to. She's not going to be as brash as Ronan is, where he because Ronan basically yeah, said, Thanos said, "I'm going to outdo you," and Thanos was like, "No, you're not. Um, you can get yeah. through them, and if you get through them, you're going to get to me, and if you get to me, then you're not going to last five minutes. Um, you're going to deal, and you're, you know we'll deal with that when we come to it. But like, yeah, as far as Nebula sees with Gamora, Gamora betrayed Ronan, and betraying Ronan was betraying her, because she doesn't see any reason to betray Ronan. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I kind of agree with that too. No, that's fine. Yeah, I, I was, I was just curious. I mean, that would have been my assumption, but it was just more along the lines of. <laughs> it's never explicitly said in the film, though. Yeah. Kind of. It's yeah, just something you kind of pick up and kind of go along with. I think. Yeah. You have to kind of. Th- you, you, like, it's one of those things where you have to think about it for a second and like while while thinking like it's not bad that a film has stuff to think about stuff like that that would be that would make the plot make more sense to you yeah uh, I think a lot of the exposition was kind of woven into the narrative some of it carried across very well and some of it might have fallen short definitely yeah, yeah. Um, but um, like Rocket Raccoon like um, 
we did a piece on the site a while back now, kind of breaking down the trailer, and you can see when he's brought into the prison, all this little stuff comes up on the screen and blah, blah, blah. Like, you won't read it in the film, but you'd have to pause the trailer to spot it all. But his origins is in there, and yeah. it tells you that he's been cybernetically enhanced and this, that, and the other on a lower life form, and that's he why does, he's... A... He does kind of sum it up in that line where yeah. he's like, he's a bit pissed, and he's like, I didn't ask to be put, ripped apart and put back together. But... Mm. You can again, deem it from that, but again, if yeah. you don't, they don't stop to really push it at you. I do, yeah. I do, I do like it though. The film doesn't spoon feed the audience, and I like that in, as well because that, that that kind of goes to my i i have i had two outside of Nebula, I had two other issues with the film. Um, I think they, I mean, obviously the crew, it's 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 a five man crew, and they want to be able to explain to us you know, why these people are joining up and why, you know, why they've banded together. Mm. So, I mean, obviously, you know, Chris Pratt's character, Star-Lord, is an opportunist. Yeah. Um, with, He's hands you know, all over, basically. With a, yeah, he has a heart. So it's like, oh, all right, I was doing this for myself, but now there's actually bad guys involved, so we should probably do something about that. Um, we get Gamora trying to outrun her problems, Um and teams up with Star Lord, kind of giving away to her own um, standards or whatever. But my and obviously Drax then revenge, um, blah 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 blah. My issue with it is all of their <clears throat> all of their reasons or all of their um, basically their hooks into the group were just thrown out within the space of five ten minutes. Um, all at that bar scene, it's like. Oh, Rocket gets drunk and spews all his guts up about being, you know, a genetic cybernetic experiment. Um, and then, obviously, Groot, Groot. Um, before that, we've just, you know, Drax is angry and it's, oh, it's like, you know, blah, blah, blah. We I saw actually his, thought Drax was his... hilarious. Even when he was trying to be sincere, it was like, <clears throat> we have traveled halfway across the galaxy and Ronan is no closer to being dead. Yeah. That well, was yeah, all that actually, mattered to him. To be fair, Batiste, Drax is the one performance in the film that, like, that had no right to be any good because Batista. Yeah, I really like, didn't expect a lot because even in the comics, Drax is a very simplistic character in the sense that he's going to hurt someone. Well, it's only a matter he, of time. He has the toughest job dialogue wise because, like, keeping that flat line of kind of dialogue throughout the entire film, like, yeah, he's just the one as literal as he was. Yeah, it's it, it would have been tough, like, but um, yeah, go on. Like, yeah, but that was that was the um. So yeah, I just I, I really felt that their their backstories or. Their, or their reasons for getting involved were just tossed in really quickly. Yeah. Um, now, obviously, they've only got a certain amount of time to work with. I, I get it. But I just, I, I did kind of feel it was thrown in. Like, look, let's look at the Avengers for a second. Uh, obviously, we know we know Thor. He has his own movie. We know Captain America. We know Iron Man. We know we know their stories. Mm. We, we can kind of guess the Hulks. Um and obviously that's picked up a bit in Avengers. But then you have two additional characters, Black Widow and Hawkeye. Now we know that they work for S.H.I.E.L.D. and that's about it, really. Yeah. Um, and we know that, you know, she used to be um, a for You know, she, she defected. Um, she's a world-class... Spot. We don't really get anything to do with them. Yeah. Um, we, we know we don't learn about them as people. We don't learn about their backstories or their histories. Uh, and I guess that adds to the character because obviously they're meant to be super spies. Mm. Um but at the same time, these characters, it, it didn't matter. You know, they're there, they just are. And it worked. I don't know why they suddenly felt this need to just throw it all in there mm. and explain. Because I, I did feel like every character got, uh, this is who this person is. Like uh, you guys were saying, Yondu or Yaron. Like we practically got his, um, you know, oh, he raised him. There we go. Yeah, That's they actually that do that in a few yeah. times, to be fair to him. Um, so it, it did kind of feel that they were throwing in, um, they were th- they were throwing a lot of people. There is um, there is actually now you're saying that there is one scene that I thought was a bit oddly handled, and that's the scene where um, Gamora and Star Lord and Star Lord turns it on with her. The dialogue in that just felt like it just felt a bit weird, and um, the exposition just felt a bit kind of, as you say, it kind of feels like they forced that scene so that like Gamora had a reason to talk about. Um, yeah. her backstory yeah. like it didn't probably the thing is with that the, with the drinking scene is that th- I felt that that was kind of the perfect scene for them to all kind of just basically barf their backstory a little bit because it's like yeah. 
when you're kind of go through what they've just gone through and then you get a little bit drunk. Yeah, that's, kind of, of, that's how you would expect people to act, and, you, and then then suddenly kind of the animosity comes out a bit, and um, because they had because up until then they never really had a chance to kind of get to know each other, and like it it, it feels more natural. But then when Gamora and Star Lord are having that scene, it just kind of feels a bit like you could have done this easier. You could have done this without, you know. It, it just felt it just felt like a good dialogue, not in the right scene though. Yeah, you know, because that scene could have been just a comedic kind of like, oh, he doesn't know how to talk to women apart from trying it on with them, and then, and she's like, no, I'm not like that. You, That's not what I do. Yeah, yeah. It, it could have been funnier, you know, um, it could have been kind of, yeah, you know, it, it didn't have to be as serious as it was, and then mm. do her backstory in another scene, and it kind of work a bit better, like, you know. Um, there actually was a lot of a film, as far as I can tell, that didn't actually make it in. Like there was a lot of. Uh, sorry, yeah. Uh, in the trailers, there's scenes like that with Gamora in the shower, like, and you see her looking over her shoulder. I didn't spot that anywhere in the film. There was none of that in the film. No, and uh, Rocket Raccoon actually says we're the Guardians of a freaking Galaxy in the trailer. Again, I don't think it was used oh. in the film. I haven't. See, that's thing. I only I only ever watched the first Guardians of the Galaxy trailer, and um, to the point where if I seen it coming on in the cinema, I'd actually like block my block my ears and close my eyes. Because I literally didn't want to know anything going into the film. Um, I thought the film was better for that. But, um, yeah, no, I, I do get the feeling that there's a lot kind of like... Because the film is it has this sense of, like, you're, when you're watching it, there's, there's a real sense that, like, everything could be deeper than what it is. Yeah, a little bit. Like, um, I think this happens as well with Marvel in general and working within the larger machine of the Marvel Universe. Yeah. Certain things do get compromised. It happened in the Ed Norton Hulk film. They wanted to use a clip scene of Captain America in the ice, but it didn't sync up with Iron Man 2. It was already in the bag and ready to roll out, so that I was cool. I've completely cut. forgotten about uh, Edward Norton's Hulk. <clears throat> My God, it doesn't even feel like it's part of the canon, does it? It should have been, but then he took a hissy fit after that scene was cut, and he wouldn't do any press for it, and uh, Marvel replaced him. <laughs> wow. They, and they replaced him with a more fitting actor, if you ask me. Yeah, definitely. I think so, anyway. Do you know what's funny, so, though? Uh, when they introduced the Avengers cast at Comic-Con ages back... They actually introduced him as Ed Norton, and he walked out, and it was just kind of like, "Yay! Wait, wait what? Who's this fella? <laughs> Who's this lad?" The my last, uh, just go back to, to G O T G. <laughs> oh wait, we're talking about guys. You guys, yeah. Oh yeah, that's yeah. one. Um, last, I thought Thanos looked pretty crap. Ah, no, he looked yeah. a bit, didn't he? Um, sorry. But see, that's the I, thing. Actually, yeah, just another point. I genuinely, there's no way I could have mentioned that in my review without. Yeah, yeah, no, fair point that you didn't, but um, yeah. but he did. I think uh, he looked a little hokey, but I have to give them credit for actually committing to what he looked and not reimagining him in some movie. No, verse. that's fine. Like, but here's here's my thing, right? Um, yes, I I think I think as a character, they got him really well. Um, visually, he looks like Thanos. Yeah, but they also and they also nailed the personality or what. Thanos would pass for as a personality um, down really, you know, the, he wasn't bothered by anything that was going on around him. It was like, all right, okay, yeah, sure. You'll come fight me later on. Of course you will. Yeah. yeah he's a complete psycho. Um, so yeah. yeah, it just, it didn't phase him. And I thought that was really interesting, but he looked like something rendered for a PlayStation cutscene yeah. from Final Fantasy. Did. Yeah. Um, I didn't, I just, I, I really didn't like was an actor, him. Was, like, was, an, was an actor used for his outline for this film? I know an actor has been announced for Thanos. The Thanos. man, Josh Brolin, didn't they? But I don't yeah, know. We have just, but was he actually used know. for this film? No idea. See, he might have done the voice alone. I, I, something told, like, just seeing him on screen, I was a bit like, it doesn't look like, it looks like they took They the might have used it, but in the same way they used the Hulk, you know, that way? Like, it's yeah, very loosely yeah. under the surface of all the extra stuff. Yeah, that's the thing. Like it, 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 it like it looked like they kind of took the Thanos that they had created from Josh, like from Josh Brolin from like, you know, and like the other Avengers film, and were like, oh, we'll just kind of copy and paste it in. It looked like they didn't actually have him on set there talking to them. If you get me, like it looked like they didn't have a direct mm. reference point. They just animated them there and then. And I could be completely wrong on that, but that's what it looked like to me because it, yeah, you know, there wasn't. Yeah, I was. Yeah, a little torn on the Thanos thing because yeah he does look a little hoking whatever but at the same time he looks exactly like that in the comics so credit to them for just sticking to it because 
yeah. overall Guardians did do that I mean they didn't try and fix Groot I think we can kind of take Thanos you know yeah but I mean it's just I do understand you're, you're, though look, look at yeah look at everything else I mean look at look at your backdrops look at mm. look at the world look at Rocket that they were Root, on. man they don't they look I'm sorry amazing. I will they have the towards the end that um the the fight above the city the the, oh. the, the area the aerial combat and that that was, that was terrifying. phenomenal Oh, I, it was amazing. someone yes. told me Somebody, earlier on that had we had been born nest, a couple of years later that uh, nest comes together is just the set piece of the net and then the ship going against it yeah. was just stunning. Oh, I no I, I I think do you know you, you know what you, that scene got I, me I some, people, some, people, some people might get annoyed about it but I would compare it to the assault on the Death Star yeah, yeah I was that's, just that's, saying that's, yeah. someone told that's, me that's what it's like you know what I mean it, it's that kind of wow this yeah, would have been really the Star up, Wars of our generation the problem with Thanos is that when Ronan the Accuser had a far more dark screen presence, I think, than Thanos did. Um, mm-hmm. For me, at least. I felt more threatened when Ronan the Accuser was on screen than I did when Thanos did. Like They really um, did a lot to fit, set up Ronan as like the bad they guy in this. They, I, they had like, the darker set pieces, where, uh, big monolithic the ship. They going through the ship and they finally find Ronan the Accuser. Like, I got chills. I was like, it's about to go oh, down. Yeah. Now, you know, well, like, and then he gets blown sky high. What's really good as well is Ronan doesn't think he's the bad guy. He thinks he's doing, you know, he thinks everybody else is wrong. Oh, he's yeah. He's upholding ancient Cree laws. He's basically like a mad religious zealot. He and, is, you know, yeah. people going out having sex before marriage and all this. Ronan's not having it. <laughs> no, he's not. He's, put, he's, he's accusing put, you He's putting anyway. the hammer down. Damn right. That was a good one. <laughs> oh, <laughs> God oh my. <laughs> But, uh, but um, um, yeah, I, I, I really like them um, because Ronan as a character in the book is phenomenal. He's great, and he's not always the bad guy. He's fleshed out, and he can be this, that, and the other. He can have his own agenda. Like, a lot of people are kind of like, oh, so he's the bad guy? It was, well, not really, but he was in this because that's where his interest went, mm. and he went spectacularly against Xander as a planet. We or I was Xander. <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it! They were fine there in the end. Let's... <laughs> but again, though, on the sand there, battles in uh, just the <laughs> ending with the ravagers and all that, and you see all the ships turn upwards, and Rocket basically says, "Shoot them before they hit the ground." And oh, no. you got the scene of Xander was it reminded me a lot like Asgard. It was kind of a crown jewel in the cosmos. You know what I mean? It was the, yeah, the, yeah, more say, the action in this was above and well above and beyond what Thor: The Dark World got up. Oh no, absolutely. I don't mean to compare the action, but just the spectacle of Asgard compared to the other realms. They're yeah. kind of a bit bleh. Whereas yeah. you'd like to live in Asgard, it's really nice to look at. But um, that's what I felt Xandar was kind of like the jewel of the cosmos. Yeah. Of all the other set pieces, Xandar just seemed like this utopia of a place. But to see all these nasty thieves and whatnot coming to defend it was a really nice moment. The Ravagers, they're basically like space pirates. It's kind of a, yeah, get it done kind of thing. genuinely sad about uh, the net breaking and stuff and yeah i was genuinely nice. sad about that i i nearly cried it was that handled was... well the characters were for the most part handled well um... we yeah we're gonna wrap it up so no uh, yes uh, yes even started. I, I i i've been <laughs> typing it for ages saying let's wrap the bloody thing up oh i didn't read yeah, any of that messaging, he's been so... messaging us the last three quarters of an hour being like talking too much oh but can we not so mention funny. did anyone catch the watchers referenced in it what? The, that would be the when the, with the Infinity Gems? Yeah, I think what? that was yeah. the Watchers. The, wa- the Watchers is then Uatu's race, the Watchers. Yeah, I'm wow. pretty sure that was them. Wow. So we might get a little bit of an origin story there. And then just other things like the Collector's Lab. <laughs> I'm just trying to get all this in before Declan cuts us yeah, off. Yeah, I know. <laughs> this, is, this is his essay. This is, this is just all the book. I would actually like to point out this, this is supposed to be like half an hour and that was it. Uh, we cut out that whole Starship Trooper part of his start, Grant. <laughs> the only part to race has actually been able to contribute to. I haven't had a word in, lads. It's a story. And now it just goes quiet. Yeah, awkward. What? No, I just, like... Oh, I think I will... not quit. Hmm? We seem to have lost Sock. I was wondering, I was wondering why it went really quiet for a second. <laughs> sock literally talked cold. itself out of the call. <laughs> <laughs> Aww. Okay, we're getting we're getting him back. We're getting him back. I'm back. And there he is. You're back. You're not mad at us anymore. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm wrong. 
Well, in fairness, for the, for the eight seconds that you were gone, Therese got to say at least eight words. So, so now Yay. I feel like I'm posing Therese back all the time. <laughs> I didn't mean to if I did. Therese, you barely talked. Give us your give us your give us your thoughts. Guardians of the Galaxy in one sentence. Yeah. No. Less than eight words, please. Uh, it was really good, and I agree with most part points mentioned. Excellent. Yeah. <laughs> we'll and make a politician out of you yet, Trey. Yeah. Politician out of you yet. It was an excellent fence to sit on. <laughs> <laughs> I could have said more, but you know, you really covered every possible angle. I think. Not yet. We haven't. The collector's <laughs> lab. So when you walk in. Hmm? When you come into the collector's lab and you get to see all these other things. Here, sock, for me. sock, sock. Will you put yeah. a sock in it, yeah? No. Oh. Um, <laughs> we're going. We're going. We're, yeah, we we are going to cut it here. No, um, but there's loads. So like, yes, there is loads. But sock, will you do an article for the site and just go into it all of it? Oh, but the effort to have yeah, them type it all out. 